the patient begins to show signs and symptoms uh, that he had very early on before we began chemotherapy and before he benefited. Um, we want to assess, uh, restage the patient. Uh, typically, we will use uh, CAT scans uh, with IV contrast, uh, oral contrast. Uh, sometimes we'll use PET scans uh, to see the extent of uh, whether the tumor has grown. Um, sometimes we'll use CA199. Uh, that'll tell us if it's increasing that maybe we want to perform restaging studies earlier. We don't, though, want to make treatment decisions, make uh, changes in our uh, chemotherapy based on CA199 alone. That is not sufficient, especially when you think about, again, this issue of managing uh, the jaundice, the biliary stent, because as we know, CA199 can falsely elevate in that situation. Uh, our patient presents with increasing fatigue, changes in his uh, appetite, pain, uh, and the jaundice, and so we're uh, quite concerned uh, about having uh, tumor progression. Uh, and as we said, he goes on to have imaging studies that confirm that the liver lesions are uh, progressing uh, and the mass in the pancreas is also growing. And so now we have to think about changing our uh, treatment strategy, our treatment. We know that when patients are treated with gemcitabine-based therapy in the front line, uh, we can go on to 5-FU-based therapy, uh, and this is following the NCCN guidelines. So our patient was treated with gemcitabine and abraxane, and now we can go on to 5-FU-based treatments. Now, there is an FDA-approved regimen that is available uh, for our patients. Uh, this is a regimen using continuous infusion 5-FU and combining it with a novel drug, uh, Ondivide, uh, uh, MM398, uh, nanoparticle liposomal irinotecan. Uh, this was studied in a trial, the Napoli study, and when combined with 5-FU, continuous infusion, and leucovorin, the drug and the combination showed a two-month survival advantage. And so it's very important for people to realize that this drug is FDA approved for gemcitabine refractory patients. So our objective continues to be to prolong time, maintain quality of life, uh, and manage very closely the side effects from our intervention, but also the side effects from pancreas cancer itself. Uh, we will continue on to this uh, second line treatment. Uh, if we had chosen fulfirinox in the frontline setting, what we can use now in the second line is somewhat limited. We could try to give gemcitabine or braxane, but as everybody knows, fulfirinox carries with it oxaliplatin, which carries with it neuropathy, which is not necessarily reversible. And so now you try to treat with another combination that has neuropathy associated with it, it's very hard to go from fulfirinox to gemcitabine or braxane. You would not use fulfirinox in the frontline setting and then go on to nanoparticle liposomal arenatecan onivide. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So that's why when we talked about the treatment options for our patient in the frontline, we're thinking our treatment spectrum. What are we going to use if and when the patient's tumors grow? What do we use in the second line? And so that's why this gemcitabine 5-FU-based sequence, gemcitabine or braxane, survival advantage, FDA approved, uh, on divide or uh, the Naliri regimen, again, survival benefit, FDA approved. That's why that sequence is so meaningful for patients.